Wear the gown. Brought to you by CHI St. Vincent. In your 20s and 30s, you may not think much of it, but, you know, when you, you know, it's not, it doesn't get any better over time. It gets worse over time. Cardiologist Jason Pelton in the CHI St. Vincent Heart Clinic in Hot Springs on knowing your numbers, your blood pressure, no matter how young you are. You know, I, I'm seeing people in my clinic is, you know, I had a 31-year-old come see me the other day that, that's already having those end-stage effects. To complicate matters, blood pressure issues are oftentimes invisible and silent. It's why patients get surprised, and Dr. Pelton hears this. You know, I feel fine. You know, I'm not having any symptoms at all. I feel great. I exercise. And you kind of show them that number, and, you know, oftentimes they, they don't believe you. Not knowing can lead to disaster in the form of heart disease, heart attacks, stroke, congestive heart failure. These aren't, these aren't even long-term, not even long-term effects. These are short-term. Remember these numbers for the rest of your life. 120 over 80. It's what the American College of Cardiology and American Heart Association recommend is the ideal. 140 over 90, you'll need medication. 180 over 110. You know, those are people that really, you know, really need the most help because that's, that's kind of where you're at that tipping point where you can have, you know, something bad happen to you quickly. In short, of all the things you know, your blood pressure could just be the most valuable. And they should go to their primary provider. They should go to uh, most pharmacies will take your blood pressure for you. Go and know. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. There's your new slogan. That's a good one. <laughs> Wear the gown. Brought to you by CHI St. Vincent. We're taking you inside a hyperbaric chamber in hopes you never really have to go here. These chambers are the focal point for the CHI St. Vincent Wound Care Center. But it incorporates um, uh, many uh, aspects other than uh, so simply looking at a wound and changing a dressing. Yes. They get the call when healing a wound needs something extra. I think it's somebody that needs more than the standard care or somebody that fails to respond in a standard way. And this is where the hyperbaric chamber can come into play. It's 100% oxygen under pressure. The goal is the growth of new blood vessels, and that helps rejuvenate injured tissue and skin. But keep in mind, only about 5 to 10% of the center's patients ever need it. But honestly, most of our patients uh, have an underlying chronic condition, which impeded their ability to heal normally in the, in the first place. Long periodic treatment schedules are needed to fight their number one enemy, diabetes. Most of the diabetic foot ulcers are on the pressure-bearing surfaces of the foot. Is it getting too warm? Even with hyperbaric chambers, treatments may take months, but it's worth it. The alternative is immediate amputation. You know, we're saving their foot, but we're also prolonging their life in that process. And they have a hospital full of specialists that can then come into play in correcting the underlying problem that caused that wound in the first place. If somebody's falling through the cracks somewhere else, they can come here. We will coordinate their care. These are Chambers of Hope. Wear the Gown, brought to you by CHI St. Vincent. This is a test. For the next few seconds, we will show you a test of the Nuclear Medicine Stress Test at CHI St. Vincent Heart Clinic. It is a two-part test, and it helps us determine if there's blockage in the coronary arteries. Looking more like a video game than medical technology, this is an invaluable tool for catching problems in advance, especially for patients that have already been through heart operations, such as... Bypasses, you know, sometimes 10 years, some last 20 years, but eventually those will need to be evaluated again. As nuclear medicine technologist Beth Russell is quick to point out, coronary artery disease progresses. Being legs up, okay. and this arm up under your head. Okay. And this is now one of the most often used machines in the heart clinic. Non-invasive test that uses ultrasound to look at the heart. Then your two ventricles, so it's upside down. With our friend Zach helping us illustrate, Echo Lab supervisor Jim Rose scours the landscape of the heart looking for issues with tissues. Heart size, uh, function, uh, we look at the valves, make sure that they're not leaking or stenotic. This often comes with a stress test. 
four pictures before the treadmill than the same four pictures after. We don't want to see any wall motion abnormalities or changes in the wall motion. Every keystroke gives Jim a different view. The techs take a lot of pictures. Cardiac health it would be probably first and foremost. Going nuclear or ultrasound, know this. Every test is geared for something specific. A lot of people have underlying disease that they don't know that they have. If we can find it and fix it before you have the heart attack that damages the heart muscle, then you're so much better off. That's MedTech speak for Wear the Gown. Wear the Gown, brought to you by CHI St. Vincent. Those low seats. James Langley has been the pastor at the Apostolic Faith Church in Arkadelphia for 30 years. But since 2014, he has been coming here for services once a week. Diabetes, uh, I had uh, calluses to grow in the bottom of my feet. Pastor Langley isn't in a lot of pain. Uh, the most uncomfortable thing is this boot. <laughs> he knows, though, if he doesn't get treatment, it can be tragic. It, it starts out with, with basically a break in the skin, and then that skin forms an ulcer, and that ulcer can actually deepen. The infection grows, and loss of limbs is often the outcome. Again, the most important thing is keep the boot on. Clinic director Robert Kleinhens leads the fight to keep infection at bay with weekly cleanings. The, the quicker we catch this, the smaller the wound, the better it is for us to get it healed. Trouble is, diabetics get no pain signals. As the longer you've been diabetic, you tend to lose feeling in your feet. Pastor Langley has had problems on and off again and has had to adjust. Now, I've got some good people that work with me, and they kind of do my leg work for uh, everything except preaching. <laughs> and Dr. Kleinhens has a sermon of his own for diabetics. They need to always make sure that they check their feet several times a day. When you get up in the morning, when you go to bed in the evening. Any break in the skin, get into a clinic and don't expect it to heal quickly. You know, I say that this is going to take a while to heal, and you think it's going to take a couple weeks, and I'm thinking a couple months. And the pastor adds an amen. I feel very fortunate that I discovered the problem when I did, because out of all the tragedies, it would be more tragic had I not uh, come to get uh, help with this. Spoken by a man who saved souls on Sunday and looks to get his saved during the week. And hopefully one day it'll be healed. Wear the Gown, brought to you by CHI St. Vincent. One year ago, Rita Dobson had bunions, and she made a mistake. We, we waited, we tried to see if I could just tolerate it. it, it that wasn't working. So she got an appointment at this place to see this man, Dr. Nabo Patel. So a bunion deformity is malalignment of the great toe joint. Just like a car with problems when wheels don't align, the big toe out of whack can produce the big bump and then pain and consequences. When you start having pain, you'll start limping more. You'll start not wanting to be as active as you should be. Rita was not about to do surgery. She'd heard horror stories. Fortunately, there is now a new, simpler procedure. It's called the ProStep uh, Minimally Invasive but, uh, Surgery Procedure. Simple and not as scary. Incision is probably about the size of a pencil eraser. Rita was reassured. I felt very confident that he was going to take care of me. Six weeks ago, she had it done. And? Six weeks and I'm back in a regular shoe. Uh, X-rays look like it's been healing from day one till now within six weeks. Good thing Rita acted when she did to get rid of the pain. Also, if she would have waited, the bunion could have got worse to where even hammer toe deformities could have formed more, causing more surgery for other toes as well. Dr. Patel is also all about inserts, padding, orthotics, whatever it takes with bunions. Just take action. Tell them, Rita. You can't do anything without your feet.